Welcome to Ear Biscuits. I'm Link. And I'm Red. It's time for another conversation with someone interesting from the internet. And this week, that person is Thomas Ridgewell, a.k.a. Tom Ska. Yep. Uh, Tom first became known for his co-authorship and voiceover work on the popular animated series online, Ed's World. And also, way back in 2006, he started his own YouTube channel, Tom Ska. It's basically sketch comedy animations, and action videos. We've been huge fans of Tom. We were elated to find out that he knew of our work from way back in the day. Uh, So it was really cool to catch up with him at VidCon to Mm -hmm. have this conversation. Uh, His channel is approaching 3 million subscribers. He's got over 525 million views, and he's updating his content regularly, uh, showcasing his distinct sense of humor. Here's a little sample of his work uh, in this sketch, Picture Perfect, uh, released in November 2013. It's got about 2 million views. In this, Tom attempts to teach his fellow YouTuber Crab Sticks how to paint. Chris, I'm going to teach you how to paint. Why? Because I want to build the only type of ship that doesn't sink. The Titanic. No, a friendship. Also, the Titanic did sink. Impossible. Chris, I want you to paint me. Done. Show me. That is a shoe. You have painted a shoe. Damn, it must be this brush. Try again. Done. Show me. I imagined you being Chinese this time. That is still a shoe, yet somehow more racist. Damn this xenophobic brush. Only a bad workman blames his tools. (laughs) Why not a work woman? Now is not the time for feminism, Chris. When will it be time, Tom? Try again. Tom's most popular series is his ASDF movie, ASDF movie, series uh it's flash animation that consists of rapid fire short skits featuring various stick figures having quick dialogue exchanges figures 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 i say figures yeah figures <laughs> Fig- <laughs> figures <laughs> emphasis on the gear the asdif series as a whole which has seven episodes in ancillary content has just over 290 million views almost 300 million views on this stuff here's a taste of episode seven Ma'am, I'm afraid I caught your son doing homework. Where did I go wrong? Hey, Joey, do you want to eat me? No thanks, Mr. Muffin. But I want to die. Hey, Stacy, do you want to go to the prom with me? Aw, I'm sorry, but I'm a ghost. But you're not dead. (laughs) Bye, Brian. Okay, you get get an idea. Pretty random stuff, but hilarious. Now, I, I really enjoyed this conversation with Tom. I feel like this was... A very honest, very poignant conversation with him. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd say this is one of my favorite ear biscuits. Thought provoking, poignant. Did you say poignant? I did say poignant. It, did you Did you say the G? Did you pronounce the poignant? I could say poignant if you want me to. You could say that. If you I'm could gonna... say figure. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. Um, we talked to Tom about the interesting ramifications of his upbringing as a Jehovah's Witness and his path to agnosticism. We also talked about what business he has making a bona fide sex education video on his channel. He did just that. And we had an extremely open discussion about him losing his best friend and creative partner, Ed Gould, creator of Ed's World, to leukemia in March of 2012. Yeah, I mean, I think in our conversation, the way he put it back to us was he asked us, what would it be like if one of us lost the other? How would we carry on personally and creatively. So I really appreciated the fact that Tom uh, went there with us. Very open. We had a conversation about uh, that painful part of his life and, and, and how he's continuing to deal with that. Here it is, our Ear Biscuit with Tom Ska. Do you live life at the pace of ASDF movies or SDF. Um, I know you I, say it both ways. You I, don't care I, anymore. I don't mind how you say it at all. Okay. It's um, but you say ASDF. So I say ASDF because you know, in my, in my naive little mind, I was like, everyone will figure that out. But I was very wrong. Uh, other people say ASDF, and I really hated that for a while. But then I realized, actually, no, they're making it easier to share because they're saying how to spell it to people. So now I appreciate these people, but the, do I live my life at that pace? Because there's like a, it's a breakneck pace, like joke, joke, joke. I'm I'm in and out to the next thing, to the next thing. Yeah. I, Is I, that I, how your brain or your life works? Oh, it's definitely how my brain works. And that's really exciting. My life, not so much. My life is a lot of sleeping, um, just, <laughs> just a lot of it. Uh, you know, for me, a, a, a very successful day is a day where I come up with one joke, but to put it in perspective, my the, the speed of my, the, my brain and my life has changed so much that... 
I made one joke that's in one of my Aston movies. Um, hey, check out my new camera. Bang. Oh, wait, this isn't the camera. That, that was actually the first animation I ever made back in about 2004. And it was a minute and a half long. Same joke. One joke. Same joke. Three second long joke. It, t- it took a minute and a half to tell. Uh, and now, you know, 10 years later, there, well, and I've, I've remade it. You know, it's, it's three seconds long. And that's just, that, it's just my comedic timing has condensed. <laughs> Fun fact, though, I put that, that was my first ever animation went live on Smosh.com long, long before YouTube. Really? Before, like, yeah. Like, that's, yeah, I, I've been around since way before YouTube. That's, um, it's just YouTube happened. And that was lovely. That was a lovely. And how did you know but about Smosh.com? Smosh. How did Smosh.com? Ian and Anthony created it before YouTube, yeah. but it was just for their friends because we talked to them about it. Yeah, no. How, well, was, how did you get on that? I've been in the I've been in the scene. I've been in the game a really long time. I, I was. Um, but were you like you were on their forums yeah. as a user, mm-hmm, and you mm-hmm. submitted videos and and I wish I could find them now. I, I, that, I guess that's the only place I know I uploaded it, but it, it's I think it's long gone. But. Uh, I had a history of getting banned off forums for being a disagreeable 12-year-old. But um, oh, you got kicked off of smosh.com? I got kicked off everything. Uh, absolutely everything. But um, by by being belligerent in, in the forums? Just being very 12. You know, your average you know, 12-year-old Halo playing, I slept with your mother last night kind of attitude. That was <laughs> that was me entirely. So when I went so lately I'm I'm going through this kind of wave of really wanting to encourage people to not be awful. That's purely because I was so awful and I see that in my own audience. I'm like I think you guys are a lot like me and 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 if you are then no, please don't <laughs> be like me. But yeah, no, I was on, I was on I was on smosh.com ages ago and uh, And what did that look like? Did that look like terrible? A, as but, def- it looked pretty. It looked pretty sleek. No, the style was a stickman animation. Um, and this was all you at the time. Yeah, yeah. This was back when I didn't know how to animate at all. I don't know how to animate now. Actually, I just hire people who are way better than me. Right. So you write and direct everything, and yeah. then you've got animators. Yeah, I wanted to be an and animator. voice talent. I wanted to be an animator originally, but I just didn't have the patience for it. But I, yeah, I, I write, I direct, um, and directing is you know the kind of thing you throw air quotes in when it comes to animation because really it's so much down to the creative genius of the animators you're working with, but. But you do a lot of different I, things. Yeah, I, I, and I like mixing it up. I don't like doing the same thing too many times. But the Asdaf ones are the, you know, far and away the most successful on your channel. Absolutely, There's a yeah. lot of really successful stuff there, by the way. But you put out number seven just a few weeks ago, and it's a few it, months, yeah, and it's few months, it's and it's gone. already gotten up to 14 million yeah. views or 15 million, it's, just it, like all the other ones. Yeah, and that's and that's 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 really lovely, and and that, that's such a comforting thing. Like I figure, if 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 I upload one of those and it doesn't work, then either the site's changed or I'm just not funny anymore. Either How way, would time you to quit. describe them? Uh, I describe oh, I describe those as, that series specifically as, as yeah quick fire um, animated sketches um, very Americanized I think uh, really? when I began I did a lot of very American accents now I'm trying to do mostly British accents because you know I, I used it's to it's marketable I, <laughs> is that um, why I, I just for me I, I always find American accents funnier with with comedy like 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 swear words are so much funnier when said with American accents than British accents in my opinion but I think Americans would beg to differ but for me. Uh, Right, to it's you all, personally, from your yeah, perspective. Yeah, I think the F word, when said by an American, is so funny. <laughs> really? So well, it's not funny. one of those words that changes a lot. Uh, it, yeah, but it, somehow somehow it just sounds perfect when it comes out of an American. You'll basically engineer these things to be the quick fire. Mm. Now, so how they're, is... They're kind of jokes at their absolute core. So any joke, any, 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 joke, any narrative you can tell... You know, a dozen different ways. You can tell it over the course of an hour, or over a minute, or I think you can condense any narrative into about three seconds at its core. And some and of them are it, some of them are completely random. Like, um, well, there's the this one's not random, but it's the it's the sun, and then there's a planet orbiting yep. the sun, and it just says you're fat. Yep, and. You're out. That's just, it. That's it. And there's even like, there's no setup. Even it's no. That's just it's, funny. It's completely minimal. It's it, the whole point is that I try to take absolutely. <laughs> I don't even know why that's funny. Sometimes I just I'm just like I just know it is. It just I, is. I, yeah. You don't need to explain it. Yeah. And I, actually, it being that quick, you don't made have time it to question fu- it. Made it funnier. Yeah. You know, it was funny. Period. But then because it was funny and it was over, it became even you're just funnier. Sort of surprised. And like, did just, that happen? Yeah. You just you just wait. What? Ah, and it's just this confusion, and and yeah, because comedy at its core is the subversion of expectations, yeah. And sometimes just the lack of a, a joke is funny. Yeah. Just the, well, uh, I, I thought something was going to happen, but it didn't happen. I'm laughing. Or something so random, like the, what was the feather joke? Oh, hey baby, are you allergic to feathers? Uh, no, hey baby, are you an angel? Because so I'm two allergic guys, to feathers. It's two guys in a set it up. Two guys in a bar. There's, there's a there's a there's a man, and he slides up to a woman at a bar, and he says, "Hey baby, are you an angel?" Because I'm allergic to feathers, and then he throws up on her. 
like, because like he's allegedly. So yeah, like you got that. So like the way a lot of jokes are get written, and then is, you're out. That's it. Yeah, that's it. But a lot, a lot of jokes I write come from like here is a thing that here is a trope, here is a catchphrase, a cliche. How can I just break it? Um, which is pretty standard. But yeah, so it's like, hey, hey, baby, are you an angel? Or hey, did you, did it hurt from you when you fell from heaven? That kind of stuff. And. Uh-huh. But then I was like, what if it's like allergies related? Because originally it was a comic that I wrote when I was 16 where the last panel is just he's just broken out with his face is just inflated because he's having a allergic reaction. But, well, you know, but I, then I've, you change it to him throwing up to make it more appealing and, and quick fire and explosive. Right. And the way that the vomit looked, it was like awful. as tall as his head just and chunks, as straight as an arrow. Chunks of violent. vomit. Yeah. It's awful. Projectile. Now, uh, I'm tempted to, you know, uh, come up with some – analogy or some reason you know to, for why that content works so well like oh well the mindset of today's youth is just so fragmented yep. and all over the place and so your <laughs> frenetic G- ADD. jokes yeah, and kids don't need story anymore they just need a stream of jokes and tom scott is proving it but and ruining the youth of tomorrow but you know honestly i think it's a very simple analysis as far as i'm concerned it's incredibly funny the jokes are really, really funny. And it's just, you're like, that was funny, that was funny, that was funny, that was funny. And it just, after a while, there's just this overwhelming, like, how are all these this funny? Yeah, I, what, I, I think that's a good, what that's did, a good what, what did I say? Over, no, I'm agreeing. Oh, when I, you well, use the word overwhelming. I thought I said like it, overwarming or something, that, a word that. Yes, I'm also <laughs> contributing to overwarming. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, it's just a, a cavalcade of everything mm-hmm. being so funny. And there's no duds kind of a thing is the experience. I disagree uh, entirely. Uh, for every one I put out, I'm, I'm sure there's about three that I go, Why, what was I doing? Why did I do that? Um, but I'm saying even within about, a video. There's, there's always about three that get made, you know, within the last like two days of production. I'm like, this is funny at the time. And I look back and I'm like, that's oh. awful. That's that's not a joke. Um, but then other people like them and I just kind of have to go like, oh, okay. But I have very high, it, it, you wouldn't guess it, but I do have very high standards of, of, of what, what does and what does not go in. Because um, it's not just random. I, I think one of the things that uh, I've observed about it is I think a lot of people see certain content that might be popular today, like what you're creating. And they're just like, oh, it's just random. And people just like random stuff. And Ooh. so it's like, you know, we could just throw a bunch of words and characters into a blender and mix it up and the kids will love it. It's like, no, I, I, you know, we, I, I want to give our, this generation more credit then most people are willing to. They, they, the fact that they like what you're doing that encourages me as a comedian. Oh wow! Well, yeah, no, I, I, I don't, I, I absolutely disagree when when people do say that you know that it's just like this this mindless comedy and just like kids today are uh, stupid dumb. Um, yeah, I, I do have I do have a lot more faith in them than that. I just think that people do typically outgrow the animations over time. I've, I've witnessed, you know, you know, I've been doing them for long enough now that I've witnessed a generational shift you know uh naughty's kids started watching them and now they're teenies kids we don't really have a name for these two decades do we naughty's and teenies yeah because then it's the 20s 30s 40s oh what I are we it. in right now right yeah well the first teens. of all naughty's is 90s right no the, no then there's the 90s then there's the naughty's no, no the, the naughty's are the zeros Right? Yeah. The, like the 2000 yeah, yeah. to 2010. Yeah. Right? Am I right? Yes. Because we, wow. we don't use the term naught for zero. Okay. I mean, so when the you say naughties, I just think about naughty things. We've done, we've done naughty things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This took a time. Uh, but no, um, but yeah, the thing is, I think that people, you know, people grow up and suddenly they become way more analytical of the things they're laughing at. And they, and they kind of, I want to say high, they get higher standards, but in a way it's more that they just, they, don't, they want... Whereas when you're a kid, you you so desperately want to be entertained. Like you will read the back of a cereal box for like, yeah. I'm just going to read this and maybe something will be interesting on it. Um, you, you're like, you desperately want anything to be funny, anything to be interesting, and you'll just laugh at anything. When you when you kind of, you hit this cynicism when you're about 18. Yeah, you get self-conscious. And suddenly you're just like, I, no, here I am. You be funny and I will dissect you and I will run you through your paces. And a lot of kids decide that they're no longer going to find what I do funny. And that's kind of understandable right. because I, you know, I, I obviously have that with a lot of the YouTubers that I watch. You know, I... I was a huge fan of, of, of Smosh growing up. But, mm-hmm. you know, I think now I've kind of reached a point where it's like they're still entertaining the same kind of demographic and I right. have grown. It's absolutely not their job to to grow with me. Um, they've got their thing and that's that's great, but it's yeah, it's no longer my thing. And I think a lot of kids do grow out of it. Hmm. It's just yeah. something you enjoy at the start and it's a lot of fun. Some people still have fun with it. 
and that's great. And I, and I, I love meeting those people. It's strange when they invite me to their weddings uh, and name their kids <laughs> after me. That's happened? <laughs> uh, one child uh, has the middle name of Tom Scar, which is bizarre. The whole middle name is the Tom Scar. The whole middle name is Tom Scar. Okay, tell us about this. I wonder if the S is capitalized. Uh, uh, how, how does this work? I have no idea. Someone just came up to me one day and, and, and said, oh, yeah, my, like, my, my sister named her child, his middle name is Tom Scar. And then she was off into the night. And I'm still left wondering if that was true. And you've, you've seen no pictures. I've seen no birth certificate, but I'm going to take her word for it. Um, we've, had pet, you, we've had pets named after us. People cool. will have like two cats. Maybe. Yeah. They, they Are you paying some thing. sort of child support? <laughs> I hope not. I hope I think not. That I, 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 I you're at like risk. Probably not mine. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. You got pets named <laughs> it's your after namesake. You. But yeah, Link got us. a whole game franchise. <laughs> that's true. But I mean, ah, that's original. A, hu- um, a human. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> a, an entire human, at least middle named after Ooh. you. You know, I don't know how much that counts. Sometimes I mean, some people yeah, don't even I mean, have middle names. There might be people who have named Tom after me, but that's very presumptuous. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. There's a lot of Toms. Very, yeah. po- very popular. Well, it's interesting you talk about your fans outgrowing your content, and you're just back filling with younger fans i guess is what you're saying and because they get more analytical or they start to look down on maybe the just the tone of it but, uh, but, I, but I, I think I'm what he's saying is that, that he's that he, he his content has grown though i kind of I, I, just, I think it's i think it's very common for all of us to throw what we used to love under the bus like oh that's good stuff now i don't like that and then you know when we, when we then we hit our 20s and we're like oh maybe i shouldn't have been so hard on it but then sometimes we don't make that realization so, i think, I think so a lot of us, we you... hit this angsty teenage phase where it's like all those things that you used to love you're like oh this is lame now i would never no i'm not just, no you know but you're saying your work is is aging up as you get older and as you're Comedic yeah, taste change. Kind of, well, that kind of, is what I you're saying. I kind of do both. You know, like you've got my, my my animations, like Astor movie, which stays at kind of a constant level. Like when I make that, I am making it for myself, aged twelve to fifteen. That's mm. who I know would like that video. And got as long it. as I keep aiming for that specific kid, turns out there are a lot of that kid out there in the world, which is weird because I don't have any friends when I was that age. So <laughs> I wish I could have met any of these guys. Um, <laughs> but yeah, these these like these like adventure uh, these are uh, Adventure Time Invader Zim loving. Mm-hmm. Catchphrase screaming pie is the funniest thing in the world. Ha ha cheese kids. It's right because that's what I was. That's absolutely who I was. And, and yeah, yeah but, and, but, and you're still targeting that, but you've got other things but you're like, saying. Like basically, basically everything I make is is for me at a different age. Hmm. That's kind of how I figure it. Um, so. You know, I do like the action movies, yeah, that, that's for me at, at certain ages. But then I do the action videos, and that's kind of more when I was what I was looking for when I was 18, 19, when I was very into, you know, Freddie Wong and that. And, and not that I'm, I'm not still into Freddie Wong in a romantic way. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, and, and, and I even did, you know, I did a video called The Sex Talk, which was aimed at, again, myself, aged kind of more around 14, because I, I never got The Sex Talk. And, I, and, 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 and so I was like, I needed to have seen this. Yeah, yeah, it's and interesting. I'm going to make it now for like so, like so. Hopefully, other kids will. Okay, not... so that's your motivation because they, they, we were just talking about that. It's interesting uh, because so much of your work is just strict comedy. Now, not that the sex talk wasn't funny and had its moments, but I thought, okay, when I sat down and watched that video, this might be a parody. But then I'm like, oh no, there's no, a penis, there's, and that's how it works. Drawn it, penis, and it's, it's not even got a smiley face on it. <laughs> it's a legitimate. Yeah, sex education video. I know. I just kind of went, "Ha, surprise! Bam! There's some dicks." <laughs> <laughs> but it, I mean, what went into deciding to make that? I know the mindset and how you made it because sure. you just told us that you were targeting yourself. Mm-hmm. But was it? I can get a lot of views with this. Was it? There's a legitimate need for sex education on I, YouTube. I had no idea if I was going to get a lot of views for it. Um, I thought it could potentially be a real, a real channel killer, and, and I think I, I and I made enough redrafts to it that it wasn't a channel killer, but it could really have done a lot of damage if I'd just been like, oh, I'll just type this out in an afternoon and shoot it; it'll be fine. Uh, I went through a lot of different stages, and I actually ran the whole script past uh, hundreds of people online to be like, what am I saying that's wrong in this mm. video? And luckily, I'd made I'd made loads of mistakes in the original version. So, what was your motive in my, in making a legitimate sex education my, video? My motive, and it, it, you know, I, I don't want to get too dark, really, but you know, the, the fact is, I was looking up statistics online, and of of you know, just like terrible things like sexual abuse, and I'm like, wow, that's you know, one in like maybe one in three women are sexually abused, and and similarly, it's not dissimilar statistics for men, but then you know, one in three women are sexually abused, and and I look at my audience, my audience is one third women and two thirds men, and and I'm thinking, you know, yeah, how many of the people 
watching my videos right now are either you know going to be abused have been abused will or will be abusers ah and i just kind of had this little panic and i just I, I had i felt like i had to do something and and wow and my therapist has called this a bit of a messiah complex but um <laughs> uh but no i just felt so much like i just needed to to do something to give something back more than just just comedy and and it, and it was and it was it was great you know i i redrafted this video and 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 I think I did a lot of a lot of good, and, and apparently it's played in schools now, which is really really cool. Um, there was wow. there was one whole section of the video which was kind of a how to, which I cut out and then put on my second channel because it was like this. I don't they don't need this. They, they don't need this part of the video. Well, you can figure it out it's once like, you present the parts. Yeah, and... it's like okay, but now go make your own mistakes. Uh, but web protection. Um, but, or well, or click to my second channel. Or click to my second <laughs> channel and watch this. But I'm like, please was really subscribe. Just, I was really like, please don't watch this video. I was all, oh, I was so because yeah. Yeah, like obviously I'm I'm a, I'm a VidCon at the moment, and I, I met this little group of kids, and they couldn't have been older than five, and it was just like, oh, oh, you've seen that video? They mentioned it. They didn't mention it, but they must have seen that video, and it's <laughs> it's so awful because it's you know like I like I what I write on one thing I really don't like about YouTube is that there is an age restriction, but it's eighteen plus, and that's right. it. Whereas yeah. I want there to be like a thirteen. Yeah year old restriction so anyone under the age of 13 but the youtube would likes to pretend that no one under the age of 13 is on their website because right. you know that's obviously why justin bieber is the biggest thing ever is <laughs> you know no one under the age of 13 uses youtube <laughs> but i would i really wish that i could age restrict that video because while i do think it's important that younger people see it especially in this age of the internet because if i don't make that video someone else is gonna they're gonna find they're gonna figure it out right but what, it, was the sex uh, talk video the most unusual video you ever put on your channel even in your channel trailer where you kind of orient people to the fact that you make yeah. three different categories of videos mm -hmm. um you you make animations you make action and then you make comedy sketch videos and you made a comment in there you said and i'm gonna try things so don't, don't freak out <laughs> don't freak out and unsubscribe because i'm gonna experiment and come back with and the I, things I, that I, you I love i did that knowing that the, the sex talk was not going to be the, the the only time i was going to try something like, like that um you know, I have a few things that I want to try, such as uh, I, I want to do a video on how to YouTube, for example. Very casual, just like, uh -huh. here's everything I think, you know, people might want to know if they're going into making YouTube videos. Uh, but then I also want to do other videos, like I want to do a video on, you know, sexism. Uh, but mm -hmm. I just kind of want to, you know, gradually, you know, be like, here's some comedy, 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 comedy. But by here, the way, here's something that's kind of important. And now more jokes, ha, ha, ha. Um, I, want to, I want to mix things up and I want to present them in the game the way that I would have wanted to see them when I was that age. And in a way that hopefully it's going to do some good because... The fact is, yeah, there are loads of channels doing great things, you know, like Lacey Green, you know, doing great, you know, sexual education videos and other people doing great social awareness stuff. But the fact is their audience, it's kind of a preaching to the choir situation. Their hmm. audience is already there. Their audience is already... Interesting. Their audience is going, yeah, this that, is, that's, you're that's right. True. But whereas my audience typically is, like I said, your average kind of halo playing, I slept with your mother last night, kid, sometimes. And sometimes and um <laughs> and and so these are the kind of people it's, it's that's pretty it's insulting beneficial. when you're like i sleep with your mother sometimes not you know when you have sometimes. we're not even exclusive right <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, and it's just like on occasion oh that's <laughs> awful um <laughs> you said it but you didn't but, mean it that way yeah no um but you've got your audience and you, you've gathered them around a certain brand of humor across three different types of videos, but then you're like, but I've got things I want to say to them, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to leave that up to somebody else. That's, that's interesting, inspiring, uh, really. Yeah, and, I, and I, you know, that's why at the end of my like, sex talk video, I because I never plan on making another one, because like, people were like, oh, do more videos like on, on sex. And I'm like, no, that's fine. But that's why at the end of it, I was like, I'm going to link to Lacey Green. Lacey, take it from here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and, and just, yeah, just like, hopefully she got like a nice... Influx, influx of of kids being like, what did what does this button do? Uh, uh, sure. We haven't talked about violence. I mean, that's a big part of yes. Even across genres, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's in the sex Death, talk. Suicide. When, it's awful. <laughs> I mean, people may just casually look at your work and say, "Well, that's why that's why he's so successful." Again, we we know better. But sure. what what? How do you view it and and how do you bake in violence? What's your what's your thought process there? I love violence uh, as a comedic tool. I just I love explosions, um, blood, and my yeah, and 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 stuff like that. My my goal is to one day flip a car. You know, uh, you know, I, I I've been going when I was younger. I was raised quite religious, but even you know in church, I was still making guns out of plasticine. 
uh, and getting them confiscated and drawing stick men, you know, blowing up. And that's just always been a part of me. When I, when I was about eight years old, my mom would every week buy me a, a pack of toy cars, which I would take to the garden and destroy with a shovel. A shovel? And I would do this every week. Like, and, like hack them? Yeah, just smash them, just break them, pretend they're crashing and just... I've just been always been a very destructive child, but it was like, it's basically I'm saying that I'm kind of like Dexter, uh, whereas <laughs> I had these tendencies, but my parents just kind of let me hone them in 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 a, in a, in a they just they kind of just like let me control them, and and now that now I I make them on YouTube, but yeah, I think I hope you're not like horse from that video oh, you goodness. just released. Yeah, no, that video that, that video was the darkest, uh, the weirdest thing I've ever made. Where Explain I'm, it. <laughs> so I, yeah, I have this one character wherein it's me wearing a horse mask running around in a dress murdering people and that's oddly enough that's one of the least problematic videos i think i've ever made that video is just very much like it doesn't come from a dark place it's just i find it very funny and it my seems favorite, very happy because of the music the, the music is is but it's the creepiest happy. horse mask you'll ever see which I, floats around the internet we own one yeah, we yeah got, of course yeah. they're so funny but um yeah what's funny is that midway through shooting that video i had a therapy appointment so <laughs> midway through shooting that video i got in the cab went to therapy with the Talked dress to, and horse head on? Not with the <laughs> dress and horse mask on. But then I came, I came back and reviewed shooting that video and it was... Didn't miss a beat. Didn't miss a single beat. <laughs> well, um, yeah, well, how much are you paying this therapist? Because oh, a lot. <laughs> well, uh, she she's not doing it. No, he's like, go and you know what? You should just continue to this. Take the knife with you and just get out whatever you <laughs> have in your just system. Just leave my office. You terrifying man. Um, well, let's get, let's go back to the backstory then. I mean, the crashing cars kid who eventually yeah. makes murderous horse videos. <laughs> um, where was this? Where were, where were you born? Um, we, so, we know how you were made. You made the video about it. Oh, yes, absolutely. So we can skip that uh, part. Yeah, I wish my parents didn't tell me in such excruciating detail my uh, backstory. I can never <laughs> yeah. visit. Uh, yeah, we're not going to start. I can there. never visit Scotland or Loch Ness now. But, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I was, you know, I was, I was born and raised in England. Uh, I, I, I was uh, born. I say born and raised. I'm still there, except We're for about. right now. Uh, I, I was born in Essex, actually. So my actual original accent is more like this, which is so Essex is kind of like, um, like I don't want to say scummy, but you know, like it's, Adele. It's, Maybe uh, like, like YouTubers like Sam Pepper um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. So like uh, Emma Blackery as well. That, that's that's the Essex accent. And <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I grew out of that when I was about six. And we moved to Cambridge, which is actually a very posh part of England. Um, you know, it's Cambridge University. They they, right. they, they they row boats against Oxford a lot. There's a pretty incredible story of your birth, right? Oh yeah, no, yeah, it's wild. Um, so uh, I was originally a twin. Um, I, I I had a twin sister uh, named Amelia. At this point, I was named Dudley, which is fabulous um dudley and dudley yeah oh, i like uh, that it's full-on harry potter style and I, as a chubby kid they would have been hell at school <laughs> uh that would have been like the worst yeah the worst ever of my life always i've never i have never met a real dudley and it's like i would have been the only one there would have been no solidarity it would just been me um i wouldn't be popular on youtube like i didn't even like the name thomas when i started making you know online videos but now i'm like why that's stupid but if i'd been called dudley i think i would never would have gotten over that um but um, but yeah no uh, but basically my mom, my mother had a car accident because some stupid person pulled out in front of her and uh, caused her to do an emergency brake and and sadly uh, my mother lost my sister in this accident accident and and this the, is why she was pregnant with you this right? is why she was pregnant and and the doctor said like oh you know the child's gone I'm sorry you don't have children now uh, and my mom you know went back to work for a couple months and was like no I I, I think I'm pregnant. And the doctor's like, no, no, they, they, the baby's dead. She's like, no, I'm pretty sure I'm pregnant. And then they finally caved in and did a check. And I'm like, oh, there's a baby in there. There's a Dudley in there. There's a, well, uh, yeah, there is a Dudley in there. And then my mom was like, hey, D Tom's dad, you know how I had a child die? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pull rank and I'm going to be like, I need a favor and it's to not call my child Dudley because that's awful. <laughs> uh, and I got luckily named Thomas. But yeah, th then um, my mom had to like, you know, just sleep with her. Like she had to like basically lay down and this is so disturbingly graphic but because I basically would have fallen out. Uh, it was so complicated. Uh, hmm. and, uh, and I was born about a month premature, you know, in a, in a little box, lived in the... Like, did, she and did she carry... Your twin as well? Uh, no, I, no, the, no, uh, the, no. The twin was lost kind of Im immediately after the crash. But the twin basically is the reason I'm alive. She took physically the impact of the crash. It's oh wow, yeah, it's quite graphic to imagine. But 
hey, um, so that's really weird. But you know, my plan wow. is, well, the only thing, yeah, my plan is if I ever have a daughter, I'm, there's no question. Like she's named Amelia. There's like just no question about right. that. Um, was this sorry, a, future what, wife. Was this a story <laughs> you knew from a young age or something um, that you found out later in life? I, I kind of knew it. I kind of knew it from a young age. Um, so your parents were open about kind yeah, of talking about yeah, those type um, of things. It didn't really hit me what it meant until quite later in life. I was thinking it must, must have been about 16. I was thinking like, oh, I'm supposed to be a twin. That's weird. Mm. You know, and that really kind of, you know, weirded me out. Like, especially the etymology of our names, uh, or, or the story of our, like, is like Thomas actually means twin, uh, which is weird. Uh, and Amelia comes from the uh, Latin, I believe, of ameliorate, which means to make better. So basically I was totally the evil twin. Um, wow. Mm, which is fine. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's kind of obvious uh, that I'm the evil You'll twin. You'll own that. But yeah, that's... Um, that's kind of a weird little backstory, but yeah, I was yeah I was born and raised, and then we moved to Cambridge. Um, and and what did your parents do? Posh. My my so my mum uh, runs a hairdressing salon. Well, that's Link's dream backup job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. clearly. Uh, and um and my dad uh, co-owns the family uh, business of landscape gardening. Uh, so basically, I'm moving very soon, and I'm having my dad come and uh, do my garden. I'm hiring my own father, which is the strangest experience. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my backup plan: uh, is is the family landscape gardening business. Now you said you, you grew up Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. Uh, so the, uh, were they devout devout Jehovah's Witnesses? Are they still? And what's it like growing up in? In that it's, environment, it's, it's difficult to speak on their behalf, so I, so I won't. But yeah, I was I was raised at least for the first few years a devout uh, Jehovah's Witness. Um, you know, full on knocking on the doors, kind of upbringing, uh, no birthdays, no no Christmases, and and all that stuff. And 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 and, and what's left over now is that even though that's not me anymore, I actually have a lot of. I, I have I have a lot of love for the people in, in in my life, but I have a lot of disdain for organized religion as a whole. But you know, I I I wouldn't I don't really want to inflict that on anyone. Maybe a video will come out of it one day, but uh, for now, I'm okay just to let that sleeping dog lie. What was the progression? Uh, I mean, the, the progression was was really just that um, it, we kind of slipped away. I think the, the whole family kind of pulled back a bit over time, and then but I spent my first ten years very carefully indoctrinated into that, but not enough that I became kind of brainwashed. But then you know we kind of fell back for a few years and then by the time my parents tried to get m me more back into it, I'd already kind of slipped a bit. And then I went to uni and started meeting atheists and people from the world. And, uh, and, and right. I came and I, and I kind of became very open-minded and, and, uh, and was there anyone in particular or any thing or that happened that, Kind of broke you out of there, there the was, faith. There's a handful of a uh, handful of things actually. Um, one of them is is, is my friend Jacob, uh, who is a YouTuber called Latum Way, and uh, meeting him, he he was like an atheist ranty YouTuber, and meeting him and and, and becoming friends with him, I think definitely shaped me a lot. Uh, but genuinely, when I was younger, one of the most uh, formative uh, moments in my life was. Um, I'm, I, I'm, I couldn't have been older than about 18 and I was waiting in town center to hang out with one of my, my, my close friends. And there was this, uh, this, this man, this, uh, you know, evangelical Christian fellow on a literal soapbox, you know, preaching to the crowd. And he was, he was killer. It was so impressive to watch, you know, even if I didn't necessarily agree with everything right. he was saying, I was still, you know, kind of religious and, and he was just amazing. Like people were coming up to him, asking him impossible questions like, so do babies go to hell? And, <laughs> and, and, and so, and, and crazy questions that like would stump anyone and this man would still take them He's and the win and it was incredible and at the end of it I walked over to him and I was like hey man I just like want to say even if I don't necessarily agree with everything you said that way you're an incredible public speaker you know like Hitler and um, <laughs> and uh, and and he was very polite, and I said, you know, and but then I said, you know, but I don't necessarily kind of, you know, I don't necessarily agree with everything you, you said. And he's like, oh well, you know, that's okay, man. And I went, you know, I was, I'm actually raised a Jehovah's Witness. And then this man's face just turned, and he just got, and he went, well, brother, with a big smile on his face, went, well, brother, you're going to hell, <laughs> you're going to burn in hell. And really? Yeah, just with this, this, this terrifying, uh, you know, smile on his face, just this of this, you know, faux love and. And was like, well, you, you, uh, you need your soul to be saved, and, and and stuff like this, and and the fact that he could say that to me, you know, but also still feel like he means well, and and, and genuinely believe that just made me so terrified and angry towards you know religion. That was kind of a very much a tipping point in me being like, oh, okay, this is off. Maybe, maybe the maybe there maybe there is no right way, and and that's kind of what actually made me become. Uh, 
I'm more open-minded. And I wrote a vlog called The Day My Faith Died uh, about this this moment. And, uh, and, and I, know, I never really made it because I don't want to start that conversation yet. Mm. I don't really have any answers and I never really will. I, I, I guess at the moment I, I, clam, I class myself as ag- agnostic, which is just, I don't know. Yeah. Mm. Is there a God? I don't know. So you wrote... Mm-hmm. A vlog, you mm-hmm. scripted it, but you never filmed it. No, not really. Because you don't want to have that dialogue on your channel yeah, yet. Yeah, it's just like, I, of all the things I want to stand for at the moment, I, that's not one of them. I don't really have anything to say yet. You know, I, I feel like while, while, I mean, it's already quite, it's already quite, you know, out of line in a way of me to give my audience the sex talk. I took, you know, a million children maybe that who, who whose parents had maybe even decided not to tell their kids about this yet and gave them the sex talk prematurely. And, and so I can understand why as a parent, you'd be very upset about that. And so if I'm going to be like, hey, maybe religion's kind of crappy, uh, that's <laughs> not, that's just not my place yet. Unless I get something that's really, unless I have something that's really powerful to say, but not in a... I feel this kind of way because the truth is I am still a bit angry and I kind of want to be coming from a place of actual understanding and bleh. Well, you know, it seems like uh, even if that's what you've gone through personally, um, from what I can see, you, you you don't bring that particular thing into your comedy. No, you don't yet. You don't make fun of... I have I have two rules, um, two rules when I started making YouTube, which I still adhere to, and that is uh, no swearing and no blasphemy. Hmm. For some reason, and I guess I guess when I started it, it was always because you know I was making the question that was you know would I be okay with my parents watching this, um, and that was it, uh, or would more, more so would I be okay with my parents' friends watching this, uh, the parents from the religion and that um, right. Those bridges are long burned now, long burned, but still it was a. <laughs> and you stuck with that? Yeah, I still I still don't swear because I, I actually kind of like the challenge mm-hmm. of of making comedy without swear words. I don't think it makes me better than anyone in any way, but I, I, I do like the challenge and it does make it harder and it does make some jokes not funny. Uh, sometimes I've, rep- I've, I've replaced the F word with screw or something and it's just not as funny. Right. But it is because, you know, I do want my comedy to be accessible to little younglings and <laughs> and while I think it's okay for kids to know swear words, just, I don't know, I just, like I, I do have a bit of a problem with 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 com- with swearing in comedy sometimes, and a lot of the big, the bigger you know the like a crutch the bigger YouTubers yeah like because sometimes I'm just I feel like your joke was literally that someone just swore there was no mm-hmm. that's not a joke there's no just, artistry to that it's just, just a shock and and, and I tweet I tweeted about that yeah I, I still ha- I still have to keep in check my tweeting habits it's awful <laughs> because the rule of that I've learned on the internet is anything you say about someone can and will be found and read by them <laughs> and held against you and the first VidCon I went to. Um, back in 2012, I just I ran into the guys who make dick figures, and yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and after after I tweeted, you know, like about them doing a, a, a Kickstarter and how much money they'd asked for, and 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 they'd remember that, and everyone in their office already knew who I was, and I was like, I can't say mean things anymore. I <laughs> such, and, and yeah, and and like the sort of the, like lately, I actually did a tweet because you know like obviously PewDiePie, biggest YouTuber in the world at the moment, and. I don't know anything about them, but you know, because they're big YouTubers, you dehumanize them. You just tell yourself like, "Oh, they're just a big YouTuber." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like, I, I actually asked my audience. I was like, "Is he? What is PewDiePie? Is he actually a nice guy?" And and I was like, "Yeah, actually, he donates like hundreds of thousands to charity." And I'm like, "Oh, that's really cool." And then he messaged me like, "I'm a nice guy." Uh, <laughs> he personally, yeah. He you probably, were just asking your audience, "Is he nice?" What's bizarre? And about he PewDiePie. told you personally, he, uh, he's, so, so "Yes, Felix, I'm nice." Felix is a lot like me, uh, which is that he will track down anything and everything said about him. Uh, when 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 we you know we have the tag uh, you know of our name saved on Tumblr on on Twitter, it's not because we're looking for compliments. For some reason, we're morbidly looking for that one person who said like, "I hate this person," oh, yeah. so we can reply going, "Why?" What's What's <laughs> the worst thing that you've seen been said about you? And did you did you engage? I have an awful habit of engaging. Uh, I have a lot of people that don't like me, and mo- most of it's quite fair. I, I was quite abrasive when I was younger, and that's left scars um i yeah i i I, there's a small click of people online uh that are very ready to call me out whenever i slip up in any way what Uh, what do you they're like they're like the devils on my shoulder basically any insecurity i have they will echo it very loudly um and so basically if if they if they're okay with something i've done then i know that it must be all right uh but yeah that's there's, there's there's critics there's a lot of critics especially when you especially especially when you know what you make is so you know 
outwardly s- simple. Um, and it gets mm-hmm. the, it, the views. A lot of people feel threatened by big, successful YouTube videos. People forget that actually the more popular a YouTube video is, it means that there's actually more traffic on the site and more chance for you to succeed. Right. I genuinely believe that. Uh, so like, you should never be threatened by another YouTuber. You should never look at someone who's made sketch comedy and has got a million views and be like, oh, well, now no one's going to see my sketch. It's not like... It's not like the, it's not like a cinema screening and there was one screening and they and they've now missed you. It's mm-hmm. there's actually more likely that you will succeed. But now you got involved in creating things, mm-hmm. comedic animations and that kind of thing, uh, really early, right? I mean, how, yeah. how old were we talking about? Uh, Ten, I'd say. So back at the turn of the millennium. So how did that happen? Um, so I was, uh, so back in the old days of the internet before Google was really a thing and all that stuff, uh, we, as I'm sure you know, the way we found websites was we would type in, we would write a word and then put .com at the end. And when you're nine, 10 years old, that, that goes as far as typing in words like fart.com, um, butts.com. <laughs> Uh, and other rude <laughs> words. Sites. My father thought I was l- searching porn when I was younger because I would f- search rude words at dot com, and he was like, "Oh, what are you doing, you deviant?" It's like, no, I just it's a funny word. I just um, need to go to farts dot com. I, 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 I need what? to go to what? boobs dot com. What was it, farts dot com? I, I couldn't tell you, but I'm sure it's still active. What's um, it, farts dot com right now? I'm gonna check. I feel like that's a good I'm way to get a virus. S- um, what's it, farts dot com? It's it seems to be available. It's, a, it's available. That's not true. It's it's definitely parked. Like it's probably. I mean, I'm it's sure it's, it probably it, costs you like ten thousand oh, dollars yeah, yeah, to yeah, get yeah. it. Well, I'm, I'm I'm interested now. But um, but, but no. <laughs> okay, I, so you I, were searching end, things like in that. The end, I went to stupid.com. Okay. And I saw this animation uh, called Maynard uh, by a fellow called Tom Deslongchamp, who is uh, this American artist fellow, and and it was just um just terrible it was a stupid little animation of this man with a deformed head i think uh, riding a skateboard and laughing at squirrels and but in that moment you know i must have been, i could only have been about 10 years old and i said that whatever this is i'm going to do this for the rest of my life this and, is what i want to be and this this website is still up i'm yeah, there now it's, it's amazing Stupid. And, and now com. it sounds like knickknacks and things and it's still much the same i think it's in the same hands redneck hands. farting butt neck pillow <laughs> no the 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 quality 1699 the intelligence hey, uh, go ahead and order the, one the, two, the comedic order two. level of this site has not changed in the slightest but it's not animation anymore but, but and, no, and but, when you saw that though what was the when you said i want to do this why why did you want to do I it i don't know like I, I never thought like oh, i want to make movies i want to make tv i thought i don't know what this is but i'm sitting on a computer i'm watching a, a cartoon character fall over on a skateboard I'm going to do this. Whatever this is, I'm going to do it for the rest of my life. And that day was the day I started learning to animate, and I didn't know what, how kids animated. Uh, so I, I thought you animated in PowerPoint, Microsoft PowerPoint. Uh, so, oh, so I would start animating in slides. Can, and, and slides. Yeah, in slides of PowerPoint, and it would be like I'd do a circle on one slide, then move it on the next slide. Genius. No, no. You would like hit space bar. Yeah, hit, no, no, yeah, hold down we, space bar. We did this. Do you not remember this? We no. we did the same thing with that presentation software at school that wasn't PowerPoint but was on the um, the high school computers. I, I totally remember doing this, there, but you would do just a few frames, and every time you hit the space bar, it, something would change. Yeah, or the arrow key. That's how you do it. And, and I would make things like had hundreds of frames until it, it it crashed the you know school computers. But eventually, I learned. Oh no, wait! People use Flash, and 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 I grew at that, and I grew and grew and grew, and then I was about sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and then I was like, oh, actually, I'm really bad at this. Uh, I'm going to hire people. And uh, this little twelve year old kid uh, came up to me and was like, "Hey, Tom Scott, I have five thousand more subscribers than you on YouTube because I had two thousand. This kid had eight thousand. And uh, he said, "Let's collaborate." And I, I said, "Like, hey, can you animate this uh, Astor movie thing for my channel?" And boom, that was the that first one. Yeah, that, that was the first time I ever like you know produced or hired someone How'd else you to hire do an animation. You were sixteen. I was I was eighteen uh, or just turned eighteen, and this kid was uh, twelve, thirteen. Uh, I think he was thirteen. And you know he was a bigger YouTuber than me. Like I had, like I said, I had two thousand subscribers, and he just did it for free. And and because like I, I hoped it would be successful, I had no idea really what would happen. And then a few months later, I felt bad, so I gave him twenty pounds, which is about thirty five dollars. <laughs> Uh, and then, and then, and then, years later, I was like, I feel really bad, so I gave him a hundred pounds. Um, <laughs> That's it. But, but yeah, and, but and now, he didn't I, animate any of the other ones. No, he he did not. Um, but yeah, that was that was kind of how how it kicked off. And, <laughs> and that first one, uh, how quickly did it take off? And was that um, all on YouTube, or was yeah, it? Yeah, that was that was all YouTube. Um, yeah, the first Aston movie, you know, was uploaded August tenth, two thousand eight, and you know, it, it immediately did pretty well. Like it was like got like forty thousand views in its first day. And then, you know, kind of over the next month, went up to 700,000 views. And then 
a about a month later, it, it broke a million. The first what else video. did you try before then? Uh, I just tried little, little sketches, you know, little things. I would mostly make stuff at school, um, you know, whenever I did like a media and a film. All animation, course. none. Not animation, no live action. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I did, I did, I did live action. Um, I would. There was a couple animations, and they were just awful. Uh, I have an animation called Pokemon Extreme, which kind of uh, is is the highlight of my animating capabilities. It's awful, and. Yeah, and, and that just that just that really really took off, and now it has something like fifty million views, and that's weird um, to think. <laughs> oh well, that, well every single yeah. one of those has that at this point, which is just strange and terrifying. It's such an it's such a terrifying number to imagine. Like you know, like I, I come to here like VidCon, and it's like oh sixteen thousand people. That's a lot of people. If a video I made got that in a, that in a day, I'd be like, well, this is the worst failure I've ever made. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you were an adopter of entertainment, really, before mm-hmm. there was YouTube. You were putting stuff on Smosh.com I remember, and, I remember, and Stupid.com and everywhere else you yeah, could find it. I remember when it was Google Video. And I mean, now it is Google Video again, but still. Right. Yeah. So you were living at, you were living at home up until the age of 18 and just kind of doing this for fun. Mm-hmm. At some, what did you do after 18? I went to university. Like, I already kind of figured that I didn't really care about university. Um, I just wanted to do this and fit, to see where that took me. But I kind of went to university uh, and I, I still got my degree. But really, it was what I did there was mostly grow as a YouTuber. Um, okay. And, you know, I've never had to use my degree to get a job. Uh, I had to turn down jobs whilst at university. Well, tell us about the Mensa thing oh the mensa thing oh goodness i mean that was that's like yeah like that's a really weird thing that i, I like I, I just pretty much never talk about that because it, it it's much like talking about religion uh for some reason it starts a fight every time i do because everyone's like oh you th- oh you think you're a genius it's like no i don't like it's I, just, I have a piece of paper leave me alone so but when i was nine years old i um i went a bit loopy uh because i had a, a teacher that was bullying me and the, the you know the, the, the how the, so emotional like you know torment you know being like oh i'm gonna make this one child because i was a fidgeter i was a nuisance but apparently this teacher was very abusive and since since then has actually been like fired and and, like sued and i believe in all this stuff but um but like you know she would like make like when in the assembly or whatever it's called here you know when it's all the kids in the room like she'd just make me stand up or like she'd bring me to the front and do stuff. If I put my hands in my pocket, she'd pin the pockets. But basically, you know, just really awful teacher. But I went a bit loopy and the teachers couldn't figure out why. And that's actually where I developed an eating problem. Oh, cake is just delicious. I went to IHOP today. Oh, my. You, mm. <laughs> international House of Pancakes is a big lie, though. It's only here in America. But anyway. Um, so It draws an international crowd. It really, 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 really does. Um, but, so uh, so but, as a coping it, mechanism, so you would start eating would start and becoming eating. a genius. Uh, well, no, not so much, but uh, they, they took me to the shrink and the shrink was like, hey, there's something strange about this kid. We think he has Asperger's. Uh, and then they took me to a, do an IQ test and they're like, oh, we were wrong. Uh, no, he he actually has a genius level IQ. And I can't say that I can't speak for what I have now, but when I was nine, uh, I had a, a genius level IQ and, and they were like, oh, we'll be in Mensa. And that was just a nice little thing. What is it? I don't know what, explain that. I've Mensa, heard it. But... Mensa is just a, the, I'm sure it stands for something, but it's a, just an honorary title for smart people. And it's just. Do you have sh- to go to meetings? No. Everyone right. Mensa is short sighted. Like turn your head and cough. Much or... I've got. No, you sit in a circle um, and you say, "Hi, my name is Tom, and, I and I'm a smart. genius." <laughs> yeah, but that's that's it. Like it, it never really hasn't really had any effect on my life. But um, yeah, everyone who's like in it is some kind of like scientist or something. And I'm like, I'm going to make cartoons online. But people do get you're what you're getting at too is people are really sensitive about anytime you say anything about yourself. Yeah, and, and, they if, immediately if you compare imply themselves. You have any pride. Oh, uh, you're yeah. like, I'm going to destroy you. So it is, it's not the British way. You know, the British way yeah. is to, you know, be like, hey, I'm <laughs> and And then they laugh. So I just don't really mention the good things. Uh, I, don't, I don't really reply to the nice people or, or talk about the good stuff because when I do it, just see, people are just like, oh, look at you boasting about your family. Mm-hmm. So it, this job keeps you humble. <laughs> yeah. It depended on what you read, and, and you just have to read it all. I know how right. it is. So at uni, mm-hmm. as you call it, university, I mean, yeah. you were um, still very much focused on YouTube, is what mm-hmm. you said. Yeah, I mean, as a business model, uh, kind of. It, yeah, it, it, it was very fortunately. Yeah, but the YouTube Partner Program came in just as I turned eighteen, uh, near enough, and and that meant that I never had to get a real job. I'm doing air quotes. Um, you can't see, but I never had to get a real job. Um, 
so luckily I just started making a living off that. And in my first year of university, I had, I got to tell my parents, you know what? I don't need my pocket money this, mm. this month. Uh, I got this. Mm. Um, okay. Well, tell us about Ed's world and how okay. that comes into all this. Okay. So Ed's world, um, Back in the old Smosh.com days, uh, there was a website called Stick Suicide, which actually is now uh, Cyanide and Happiness, um, the the very popular webcomic. Um, but there was a website called Stick Suicide where I met uh, this kid called Ed Gould, who was this, you know, for some reason very physically underdeveloped man uh, who was about f- 15 years old. His voice didn't break till he was 18, which is very questionable. Um, <laughs> and, and how and, uh, he was 15 at the time. He was, how he, was old a, you? he was a couple years older than me, so I would okay. have been like 13. He'd have been about 15. And, and he made these just awful looking back now animations. But, you know, I, as a kid who loved online cartoons, I was like, you are God. And I spammed him and I spammed him until eventually he was like, okay, you can be in the background of one of my really good cartoons. And then, you know, and then as time went by, it was like, okay, you can do a voice. Okay, your character has a name. And then there, this <laughs> show grew. And over the course of, you know, nearly, n- nearly eight years, uh, the show Ed's World grew and became this kind of big thing that, that, that people really, really loved. Uh, and it's just this, it's this cartoon series about, you know, Ed and, and, and Tom and, and, and his friend Matt and, and the wacky adventures that these, you know, three straight white males get on. And you um, were Tom. I was Tom. And which, it was kind of longer form. Mm, yeah, like the, the, they were always made as about 10 minutes because mm-hmm. Ed had awful pacing and what could have been five minutes was always about 10. Uh, just lots of pauses. If he'd spent a long time drawing a background, he, we had to make sure everyone saw it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, sadly, uh, he developed, you know, cancer of the blood, leukemia, and passed away in 2012. But uh, I mean, but you were there from a 13 year old going yeah. through this whole process so, with him. Well, know, I mean, I, I actually, it's, what's really funny is, it's funny actually, this is the saddest thing I'm going to say. Uh, what's really sad is, you know, I, I compared, uh, you know, our relationship to your guys' relationship. You know, uh, when, when he passed, I was like, well, great. I am, you know, I'm, I'm Link without my Rhett or Rhett without my Link, whichever. Uh, or, you know, or other YouTube, you know, mm-hmm. duos. I'm Ian without Anthony, mm-hmm. uh, John without Hank. Um, right. I mean, right. Let, let's Barats even without Beretta. Oh wait, that happened. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's build into it a little bit more. Uh, up to that point, I mean, you guys, you were working remotely. You didn't. Uh, yeah, he lived in London. I was, you know, I was around in different places. We, we, we'd hang out here and there, but you know, ultimately, we, we made the cartoon online. Uh, and how we, successful was it? It was, you know, it was pretty successful. It's, it's, it's got a really, it's held a really weird place in a lot of people's hearts. It's, it, it's uh-huh. a source of nostalgia and inspiration for a lot of people, and that's that's wicked nice. And and so, and you were doing your uh, own videos, yeah, I was, in I was doing parallel. My, I was doing my own things, but they were always smaller than Ed's. Uh, I only overtook him in subscribers when he had cancer, which didn't really feel like a fair game. It was like <laughs> right. it's, it, it was tortoise in the hair. It was like, oh come on, at least get up on your feet, soldier. So your um, main thing was being. Uh, yeah, I think the, mo- the, the most impressive thing I did it was Ed's World, which I gradually kind of took over as a, a, you know, a co-writer, co-producer, co-director and, and, and stuff. And, and, and by the time that Ed, before Ed passed, I'd already kind of moved on to being the, the lead, you know, writer and, 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 and director and producer. And, and, you know, and, you, and you've right, said I mean, online that Ed was instrumental at being the kind of the first critic of your Oh yeah, of he was work. a miserable bugger. Like he would, uh, yeah, anything you presented him with, he'd be the first to criticize it. He hated Astor movie, despite animating animating the most popular one and playing the most popular character, the I Like Trains kid. And what was his criticism? Uh, same as everyone else's, same as all the other animators in the world. Just like, well, it's really simple and it's actually not very funny. But you know, this is that's Ed. He was a miserable man. Uh, that's <laughs> but that's you know that was part of his charm. Right, doing our quotes again, and you but, became um, business partners working remotely. Were yeah. you also best friends? Uh, best friends is a very strong word. I say his, his, his best friend was uh, a fellow called Matt um, or Wally Cube, Matt Lobster, whatever username he's going by at the moment. Uh, and and they they were definitely best friends because they you know they they lived together at uni and they'd been friends for a very long time. But the the thing was, I moved down to London in two thousand. Uh, 11 to live with Ed and to like now I finished university finally now I'm going to move to London I'm going to be your best friend we're going to live together and we're going to take this show on the road yeah uh, and then he died <laughs> um, he had leukemia and then there was did. a uh, there was a remission uh, you know, he had leukemia when he was younger and the problem you know with leukemia and before you met him, he had uh, been no, done. No, he, he developed it, and and yeah, and the, the, the horrible thing about you know about it was is that when you know when, when it went away, you know the doctors didn't tell him like oh it's gone. It's you know, it was more of a well it it'll come back and 
yeah, it's not a matter of will it kill you, it's when it'll kill you uh, with, with, his, with his diagnosis, which was awful. Um, but he, but the, yeah, he was on track to beat it, which was really weird. The doctor's like, yeah, 70, 30 chance you'll live. Nope. Um, mm. And that was really awful. But yeah, when he passed, I... But how, and how much oh, did you talk about it? I mean, was it... It was very candidly. Like, that's the thing is that I never once... I, I, I tried to be very strong. I never once played into the, like, the sad, you know, like, oh, buddy, how you doing? Uh, you know, I would every time I, I visited him in the hospital, the first thing I'd pretty much say when I walked in the room was, oh, what happened? Uh, and I'd just make jokes immediately. And then he would always be so sad in the hospital, you know, because, like, either his parents or someone would be there being very heavy, sad. Mm-hmm. And I'd show up and I'd be like, get out of bed. Uh, and and I think that was that was very helpful to to him to have someone who, you know, just treated it like it was normal. Like, because that, he truly just kind of felt it as an inconvenience. Mm-hmm. You know, it stopped him from making cartoons, which he wanted to do. And and, and so, I, I, you know, he, the, I was stable, but I didn't, ultimately, I didn't emotionally prepare myself in any way mm-hmm. for the chance that I was wrong. So I was in denial for quite a while uh, when he passed. Was there a struggle in having left the faith that you were raised in at this point, you know, when the rubber meets the road, was there a an increased bitterness of that or a temptation to go back to it? Or did you? How, uh, how did your it, yeah. faith? Well, I, I guess I was just very kind of, I didn't blame anyone. Like that's the thing is, you know, like kind of it's oddly freeing to be like, well, there's no one to blame. It's just, it is, you know, happens. And, and it was, you know, but then, but then yes, a, a Jehovah's Witness did knock on my door a few weeks later and was like, hey, want to have a book? And I'm like, brother, just don't and uh you know because yeah but yeah it was very hard you know I, I, I took it you know because the first time ed got cancer um i don't know how how much you want this in your podcast but the first time ed did get cancer i blamed myself uh because really? of religious upbringing and this is and, well wait, and, connect those dots i don't get it yep this is a fun story and this is a whole vlog's worth of content and i'm just gonna pile into you know one sentence but no, um, t- d- just let but, us have it <laughs> Um, so I, this is another reason why I definitely felt like I needed to make the sex talk was because of my religious background. I genuinely believed when I was a child that masturbation was such a sin that it caused bad things to happen. And every time I did it, something bad would happen and be my fault. So Ed went to the doctors and, you know, they were like, oh, you might have cancer. And he told me on MSN, mm, those were the days. And I was like, oh, no. You're like, I sure have been doing that a lot. Maybe really it's my sh- fault. I really shouldn't touch my... I'm going to do it. Uh, and then the next day it was like, oh, well, I have cancer. And I felt oh, right. so, so guilty and so responsible. It was, we don't have the results yet. Oh. Yeah. We'll know the next day. And I was like, well, I really shouldn't tempt fate, but I am 14. <laughs> And, um, and yeah, and I felt so, I felt responsible and I prayed and prayed and prayed and I, you know, I made it, I struck, I struck up a deal with God and I said, I will not touch myself if ever again, if Ed gets to live. And I didn't for two years until his cancer went into remission and... Did you... And I kind of went back on my deal a little bit. But you felt, when you, when it went into remission... Did you feel like that you had paid your penance and that way, did it? I kind of, it, yeah, like it's very arrogant to believe like, oh yeah, I saved his life. But uh, no, it was, it, I felt it was. Well, not mental. after you caused it. I felt like I caused it. And so like, I was like, I'm sorry, I'll never do that again. Uh, but then I did that again. But yeah, that was, that was very strange. And these are other reasons why I need, needed to make the sex talk and. Right. And tell people to touch themselves and it's not weird and it doesn't give people cancer and kill your cat. <sighs> and then but, how long until it uh, returned? Uh, um, three years, I'd say. So, you know, basically the entirety of me being at uni and it was just when I'd finished uni and I was planning the move where it's pretty much like, oh, it's back. Um, and at that point, you are you had relinquished your faith. I Yeah, well, yeah, I'd kind of just been like, yeah, this isn't for me um, and, and stuff, so... Mm-hmm. So there was no struggle when it came back for there to be a personal Not tie really. to you. I wasn't. I I wasn't like. You know, nope, I did it again. Like, Sorry, girlfriend, you're out. Um, but I mean, actually, I did break up with my girlfriend around about that time. But that was a different 
reasons. Um, but uh, yeah, no, there wasn't there wasn't a, a religious struggle there. It was just kind of like a. I was definitely in, in the more the mindset of you know not everything happens for a reason. You mentioned in, in a vlog that you kind of took it upon yourself to continue Ed's world. Tell us about how that came about. That was a hasty decision. Um, so you know. What's what's really morose about the situation is that um, the day Ed died, uh, or the day before Ed died, I was joking around with with Paul, who would become the animator of the show. The you know like oh here's what I'm gonna do if Ed ever gets like a terminal diagnosis, like just joking around, you know. It, because the other thing is that we played it light. We played it like oh it's never gonna happen. Let's make it a source of comedy. And I was like saying like oh we'd be like you know like Chef from South Park. We'd uh, we'd record loads of extra lines and then just still keep the show going and all this stuff and. Like seven hours later, Ed was dead. So it was um, it was very sudden. It was so sudden. Like the the doctors, like it was just like he was ill, but then suddenly everything just failed in the space of hours, and I was asleep when it all happened. Uh, mm. I, I woke up to the phone call, uh, which was bizarre. But um, I had talked to Ed briefly about you know what would happen if he he died, but it's not like the kind of conversation. So if you croak it, uh, what am I going to do with that show? But you know, Ed's mum told me that, you know, before he died, he'd said that he wanted me to continue the show. And I just have to kind of take her word on it. Oh, I hope she wasn't lying. But I, the way I went about it, I regret massively, though. I, I you know, I, I, I know YouTube and I know commenters, and I was really afraid that if I kept the show going, people would be like, oh, you're profiting off Ed's death. So I said, I want to give everything the show makes to charity. But I feel like the only way I can do that is if I ask people, if I, if I did a fundraiser to fund the show. And the support was amazing. You know, we, we raised... $83,000, I believe. And that was crazy. Um, wish I hadn't done that. I wish that I had actually either paid for the show out of its own profits because we still would have donated a lot to charity or paid for it myself. Because I'd say, I'd, say the, I'd say that the amount of money I've lost from the stress of that obligation has been greater than the savings of not paying for it myself. And suddenly become, making it into an obligation was terrifying and just not something that I think we should have done. It turned it into a job rather than an honoring of a friendship and it turned it into an obligation. So we still have a lot to do. Um, you know, we have like uh, four and a bit more episodes to go uh, before we've met those obligations. But yeah, that was... Before you've met the obligations that uh, you of, promised of, of, in of the, the, of the initial Indiegogo campaign, okay. yeah. And how long, long after? He, what, he died in... 2012. <laughs> he died in early 2012 and here we are in mid 2014 it's still we're still not done like we really thought like oh it'll take us a year no you know that that was very wishful thinking and yeah we made promises that we couldn't keep and that was dumb in retrospect do you believe that this is still honoring his memory and your friendship i, abs I, I absolutely do um i think it's honoring his memory and his friendship for the wrong reasons now it's because it, you know like i said it's it because out of it, obligation but out of obligation not out of you know love um I think that it would have been it would have done a lot better, and people would have worked. You know, people would have probably worked for free if money hadn't even got involved. Hmm. You know, people would have done it for love. We could have done it at our own pace, and and maybe stopped whenever we wanted to. But how does it end? I mean, do so you know how it's going to end? Because I think a, actually, a logical question is, well, does the character pass away? Is there some? So um, we have uh, two episodes, two big episodes planned called the end, part one and part two, which are these massive fun episodes where we're going to try and tie off a lot of narratives not uh, and and not with the intention of ending the show per se but just bringing it to a satisfactory point where if we didn't continue no one's going to be going but what happened uh you know we 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 have plans and and maybe maybe once we have finished it suddenly we'll feel free and like oh actually I do want to keep going but we're giving ourselves the option to maybe go like, okay, we we did it, and we keep we can't keep doing this. It's it, ultimately it isn't our show; it was his show, and we need to move on with our lives. But we're giving ourselves the option, but maybe we won't. And what's the conversation with uh, Ed's mom like about this at this point? It's very strange. She's still a big fan of the show, but yeah, I mean, I think it's just she, uh, yeah, like I haven't definitively, and I probably I, I haven't definitively told her that you know, like, oh yeah, by the way, we're going to end the show uh, because the fact is we don't know, um, but. She, she would understand at this point. I think she wouldn't be like, no. Well, it sounds yeah. like the, there's lots of lessons that you've learned specifically related to that. But overall, in this whole experience of losing a business partner, a, a creative collaborator, mm -hmm. and a close friend, I mean, what's your perspective on that and what you've learned and how how does that impact how you live your life? It's changed absolutely everything. Really? Um, you know, I mean, can you guys imagine it without the other of you? It would just be 
well, I just spent a lifetime building up a thing with this person. That's done now. So it's just kind of, it, it's, there is no point to it. There's, and that's what I hate about it. You know, as a storyteller, as a, as a film lover, there's no twist. There's no, mm. na- there's no point to this. This is just chaos. It's just, it's just happened. And it, it, an irreplaceable part of my life is gone. And it's like a South Korean movie. You ever seen a South Korean movie? They always end so sad. I haven't. I'm not interested at this point. No, that's like, that's like, how they all there's end. There's like a film like The Host, and it's just, oh, okay, well, that was all for nothing. But it's um, interesting. But... As, you say as a filmmaker, maybe it's as a human, we want our lives and certainly the tragedies and the heartache to be redeemed with meaning. The only thing I've really truly learned from losing Ed is the importance of legacy. I guess... Then this sounds very pretentious, but I guess if anything, I feel like I've had an insight into the meaning of life, which, and, it, and, and in my opinion, it is our legacy. It's what we leave behind. It's the amount of people that we touch and, and affect and, 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 and inspire. And when Ed passed, what came out of the woodwork was the thousands and thousands of people that he had brought joy to and inspired to become animators and and that was in that was incredible and i and i and i think i decided at that point that what i care the most about is my legacy is how many people i can inspire and how much good i can do and how much joy i can bring to the world i mean that mostly on youtube in real life i'm quite a you know, contemptuous person, but online, at least, uh, to strangers, I <laughs> like to bring joy and I want to, you know, I want to do good and I want to make videos like the sex talk and I want to do videos, uh, you know, I want to do a video on, you know, on, on self-harm and, and help people and affect people and, and do good and leave behind a legacy because, you know, it will, it does have a ripple effect and it will pass through time. It's not just, you know, like without YouTube, I would be able to only affect my, you know, my friends and, and my immediate family and and that, that's a few generations and then maybe that's all gone but hopefully you know i can change things and make people happy and that's that's what i at least believe is the point of my life <laughs> at, the, at the end of your heart-wrenching vlog where you processed ed's death mm. um the last thing you said was uh, i could say uh, I may be getting this wrong, but you said something to the effect of, I could say that I don't know what I'm going to do, where I go from here, but the truth is I do. Um, and it's just not going to be as fun anymore. And it's not going to be as fun anymore. Yeah. Has, you know, in, in the last couple of years, A, has that proven to be true? Have things, have you found the ability to have fun more than you thought? And what is it that you know you're doing without it? Um, yeah, well, you know, like, uh, uh, so if you really, if you watch my, if you watch the numbers, if you watch my channel, uh, right around the point that Ed died, uh, I had like a bunch of videos written and it was actually the summer of kind of like my, the, the best content on my channel, the most successful stuff videos I'd made. And, you know, but then as soon as I had to start making things after he'd passed, I did, I did just like massively fall off, uh, and sank into a big hole for at least two years, which I'm now, I can comfortably say now I'm getting out of. And yeah, that, yeah, I, I do, I do know what I'm doing, but it isn't as, as fun anymore. It did cost me about, you know, two years of, of, of my life. Like I still made videos and I made a lot, I think I made a lot of really good videos, but I, you know, like it did really stick a thorn in, in everything. And, and that was lame. Um, but yeah, it's getting better. Um, it's getting a lot better and I, and I'm starting to actually enjoy my job again hmm. for the first time in a while. I'm excited to do things and that's, killer for me like i haven't been the fact i mean the, yeah like i i was getting a bit sad before i died and i, I just kind of like feeling like this is just my job and my hobby is gone it's just the obligation now and but like now i'm finally feeling that love again and i'm feeling excited again which is really great because it's just at the point when the numbers are getting awful on youtube and i'm really struggling to like maintain my audience but maybe now i'm going to have that excitement that love that i need to bring it back you know if other people can get you know 10 million views on every video they make, then damn it, so can I. I'm, I'm coming back. This is 2014. Let's go. <laughs> well, we won't hold you up anymore. You got to you got to get back to writing that next video. I have. I've, I've actually, I, I wrote a load on the plane over here, which is which is great and very exciting. Well, listen, yeah. we're, you know, you're, we love everything that you've done and this time just hanging out with you has been, it's been, just been it's, phenomenal. It's been so great. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for having me. Like, you know, like, yeah, like when I came in this room, the first thing I did was I brought up yeah, one of your laptops and checked and and yeah, I've been following you guys since two thousand seven and, and it's it's really, really it means a lot to be able to meet you guys. It's it's wicked. Thank you so much for everything you do as well. 
Yeah, Round of applause for you. Well, add silent, that in, silent add, applause. Add that in post. Okay, <laughs> well, we don't do that, but you know what? We can in spirit. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas Tomska. Thank you. And there you have it, our ear biscuit with Tom Scott. Incredibly thoughtful guy. And, yeah. I don't, and I don't mean like the thoughtful guy song that we wrote, a guy who just thinks about a lot of weird stuff. I mean, a thoughtful guy who has been through a lot of things and has is processing and has processed a lot of things that you made. You just don't know that. You just can't look at somebody's YouTube channel, especially somebody who's such an artist as him is making sketch videos and animations and know just how much has transpired over the past few years. Yeah, and I mean, so I'm I'm truly appreciative of his his honesty. I think it, you know, I certainly have many takeaways and things that I continue to think about from that conversation. I'm sure you do too. Let uh, Tom know what you think on Twitter. His uh, Twitter handle is the Tom Ska, the Tom Ska. I don't care how you pronounce it. That's how you say it. You know, the guy's been through the ringer. He's he's coming out on the other side of it. Uh, where he can be excited about being creative. And I'm excited. You know, I love every conversation we have on your biscuits. Uh, but there are the certain people that we talk to that I get especially excited about what they have yet to do. You, and when you talk to a guy like Tom, you see the work that he's done. I'm excited about this guy's. He's he's young. He's got so much stuff that he's going to create. I'm I've loved everything that he's done. I'm excited about what he's going to do in the future. Yeah, so thanks, Tom. You can, uh, again, tweet at him, the Tom Ska, and also hashtag Ear Biscuits to let us know what you think of this show. Leave a review on iTunes. That's always helpful. And you can count on us to be here next week for another one of these. Yes, indeed. <laughs>